Wait, a 20 minute video? What do you think? I got all day to- Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Welcome to my office. You know, some of the most common questions I get asked from viewers have nothing to do with woodworking, but are from people who want to know more about my design and build and filmmaking process. So for my final video of 2016, I thought I would discuss how I make videos and the equipment and software I use and show you a typical weekly workflow. Any of you who are entrepreneurs know that running a business is really a 24-7 job. Even when I take time off, I'm still working between woodworking for mere mortals and home and garden for mere mortals, I actually spend most of my time right here in my office doing typical businessy stuff. It would be impossible for me to do everything alone. I am a big believer in hiring people to do things that cost me time because really time is my most important resource. So I have a business manager who takes care of a lot of my operations as well as managing HGMM and she is invaluable. I have an accountant and a bookkeeper who work closely together to do much of my paperwork and planning. I have a web designer and a person who prepares my weekly newsletter. I have two ad reps and a video editor for HGMN. I would estimate that about 15 to 20 percent of my time is actually spent in my shop making things. Sometimes people ask me if woodworking has become less enjoyable since it's a full-time job when actually the opposite is true. Since my shop time is so limited I appreciate the craft even more and value the time when I'm actually in my shop building something. Plus I can also tell you from a woodworking skills standpoint, producing weekly videos has made me an incredibly efficient woodworker by having constant due dates. I've learned how to work extremely fast, but it all begins with a good plan. My weekly Friday project usually begins the Saturday before. I keep an ongoing list of projects that I intend to make for the show and I try to add them to my calendar wherever they seem like they'll make a good fit based on seasonality or holidays. By the way, Google Calendar is probably the most important software I use. My entire life, business and personal, is organized on it and I can share my calendar with other members of my team. But having a project listed on my calendar only gives me a general idea of what to make and I'm constantly changing it around. Sometimes I get an idea for something that I just want to make immediately. Some of my projects are things that I make just for the show then give them away. Other projects are things that I actually need around the house. For instance this summer I needed a new stand for a new gas grill that we bought. I begin a lot of my designs by looking for inspiration pieces. The best resources are Pinterest and Google Images. I'll spend an hour or more searching for say grill stands. When I find ones that I like, I save those images to an idea folder. It's important for me to design original projects and not copy what's already been done. So I look through my inspiration images and determine which elements I like and imagine how I can combine those into my own design that works for me. Once I have the basic idea in my head, I begin creating 3D plans. I use SketchUp Make. It's a free program and it does everything I need it to do. Don't bother paying for the pro version. There's really nothing else in there that you would need as a woodworker. If you feel intimidated by using SketchUp, it's actually a lot easier to learn than you might think. I followed a few video tutorials and I got up and running in just a few hours. Learning how to make accurate plans has improved and sped up my woodworking a thousand percent. Working in planning in a 3D environment lets me determine size, proportion, and figure out how everything will fit together before I saw a single board. Then, when I do get into the shop, I just follow my own plans and just bang it out. Of course, most people want step-by-step -step plans to print out rather than a SketchUp file so that they can take them into their shops. For this, I need to create a PDF. To do that, I create various views and dimensions in SketchUp and I export each view as a 2D graphic, usually as a TIFF image. I try to capture the most important angles that I can so that the step-by-step -step plans tell a story in pictures and make sense without any text. I want my international audience to be able to use my plans without translations. I also create metric versions of my plans and then I format those in A4 size for printing. Once I have all of my 2D images created, I import them into Adobe InDesign. InDesign is a 
page layout program. Once the images are linked, any modifications that I make to the drawings are automatically updated. This is important because I often make changes as I'm building the project. Sometimes I need to make full-size cutting templates, the kind that you can print out and glue to a board. I create all of these using Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator is a vector-based drawing program that lets you easily scale images to any size and keep nice crisp lines. You could do this in Photoshop, but it's really a lot clunkier to use for drawing. I import these drawings directly into InDesign just like the other 2D images. When all of this is done, I export the file as a PDF and upload it to Google Drive to make it public. Monday is a busy day for me, usually taking care of business and attending meetings for Woodworking for Mere Mortals and HGMM, so I don't get in a lot of shop time. If a project will require some prep work, say cutting down big sheets of plywood or gluing up panels, I try to take care of that since it doesn't need to be filmed. It's also when I run to the lumber yard or hardware store to pick up any materials that I might need for the project. I don't script most of what I say when I'm in the shop building a project, but I have found that scripting some things is very helpful, again, saving me time. For instance, everything I'm saying right now was scripted yesterday on Monday. I like to script certain intros and outros, especially if there's something I need to explain. This saves me tons of time fumbling over what to say. and. You know, getting tongue-tied is funny and blooper material when you first start making videos and then it just gets frustrating and annoying and time-consuming. I script all of my 60-second ad spots, custom sponsored videos, and special themed videos like my Halloween specials. I can usually memorize a sentence or two, but for anything longer, I use a teleprompter. This is the Glide Gear TMP500 teleprompter. It works with your phone or a tablet. For a more affordable option, I used to use a Parrot teleprompter. It's around $100. The main drawback I found to it was that I had to use a telephoto lens, otherwise the edges of the wide angle lens would show creating a vignette. Teleprompters let you read a script by looking directly into the lens. If your eyes are even slightly off axis, it's very distracting. I try to get started as early as possible on Tuesday morning. With my plans and templates printed out, I commute the full 20 steps to my workshop and begin cutting wood and shooting video. Just like with my woodworking, I have also become very fast and efficient with my filming. I spend very little time planning shots. Basically, I just set up the camera, show key moments, and shoot. I've learned to shoot in very short chunks, a few seconds at a time. This makes editing much easier. My primary camera, the one I'm shooting on right now, is a Canon T4i. 95% of what I shoot is on this camera. One of the things that's very important to me is a camera that has a flip out view screen so I can compose my shots since I work alone. Usually I use the autofocus to focus on something near where I'm shooting or where I'm standing and then I switch it to manual focus so that it's locked in and it's not constantly trying to adjust. I shoot in manual exposure mode with auto white balance. Inside my shop I shoot at mostly 400 ISO and when I'm outside, I use 100. Sometimes my exposures aren't perfect, but again, I'm working on a super tight schedule and my viewers usually cut me slack. I record all of my audio on a Rode shotgun mic. The sound quality is great and it saves me the hassle of having to wear a lav mic. Again, I never get complaints about the audio. I have two lenses, an 18 to 135 millimeter zoom and a 10 to 18 millimeter zoom. Having a wide angle 10 millimeter is important in my small shop. Sometimes people ask me what I do to keep my gear clean from sawdust. Well, I, I just don't. I have never had any problem with the camera not working due to sawdust. I rarely even put the lens caps on. It's just, it's always dirty, but it just keeps working. I don't think cameras are as delicate as you might think. If it ever does stop working, well, that's when it's time to upgrade and get a new camera. I have three batteries so that one is always on the charger and I never have any downtime while I'm shooting. It's the same principle I use for my drill. My second camera is a GoPro Hero 4. I use it occasionally for special shots or for time lapse. It's easy to get gimmicky and cliched with it. Plus, I'm not really a huge fan of the ultra 
ultra wide angle lens. In general, a GoPro isn't really the right tool for telling a how-to story. I use a Ravelli 70 inch tripod with a pistol grip. It's sturdy, relatively inexpensive, and I can move it around quickly. I mainly picked it out because I'm kind of tall and it extends higher than most tripods. I have a lot of daylight balanced fluorescent bulbs in the ceiling of my shop. It's super bright in here. At night, it practically glows from the street. These are great for shooting video, but they're also awesome for woodworking. You won't believe how much nicer it is to work in a really bright space. Of course, I get a lot of natural light in here too from the two windows and the garage door, which I leave open almost all the time. Eventually, I'd like to transition to all LED lights. I hope to work on that in the new year. I also have two additional light panels for task lighting and lighting up detail shots. These are the Studio Pro S600 B lights. These were recommended to me by my friend Jared Poland over at Frono's Photos. I love these lights. They are super bright LED panels with adjustable color balance. The best thing is, is that they're compact and lightweight so I can move them around really fast. Wearing a hat with overhead lights can create a shadow on my face. So I usually use those lights to fill in my face when I'm talking. Like I mentioned before, I really don't put a lot of thought into my individual camera shots. Basically, I follow a format of a wide shot showing me talking or doing something, a medium shot showing the orientation of the thing I'm working on, then a close-up to show detail. I try to use a lot of shots in my videos and I keep them short. To me, there's nothing more boring than watching a pair of hands for an entire video or one long sped up shot. You need a visual break from that. Also, if I screw up a shot or I stumble over what I wanna say, I just delete those shots immediately in the camera so there's less for me to sort through when I edit. I record to a 32 gigabyte SD card and never fill it up because I almost always edit my videos while I'm shooting. Whenever I reach a natural break in my project, say I'm waiting for glue to dry, I transfer the shots to my computer and I begin editing right away. It's far less tedious than sitting down for one long session. Editing is a big part of my job, an average eight minute project video will take me around eight hours to edit. Specialty theme videos can take even longer. The software I use is Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. It's a really robust video editing software and it only costs about $80. I do recommend getting the Platinum Edition rather than the basic $50 version. It's pretty stable and it's fairly easy to learn. I am gonna be upgrading my computer to a much faster system this month. This system is is a couple of years old and it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. It still works well for editing, but it gets laggy at times. Choosing a computer for video editing would be an entire video and there are much better resources than me for learning more. In general, I find that you really need a desktop computer rather than a laptop to do video editing. Get a big monitor and all the memory and the best video graphics card you could afford. I store all the video files for each year on separate three terabyte external hard drives. Sponsors are the lifeblood of Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Your enthusiastic support of them is what allows me to earn an income and employ the people needed to help me keep this ship floating, as well as offer free content and free plans week after week. One of the things about my sponsors that I love is that they never interfere or dictate in the content of my videos. It's super awesome that they let me have fun with my spots. I really try to make ads that viewers enjoy watching it's good business and I see it as a win-win all the way around. Casper is a great example. They make a product that I use every day and I seriously love. I have no hesitation endorsing and recommending their latex slash memory foam mattresses. We have three, one for each bed in our house. It's simply the most comfortable mattress I've ever owned. I write all of the copy for each month's spot. Usually I can come up with an idea and get it written in an hour or so. I have a lot of fun with these spots. I like figuring out how to work in the important stuff, like that Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress sold at a shockingly fair price. Shockingly.
I like to shoot in Wyatt's room because he's away at college and it's easy to set up my camera lights. It's also a good way to see if he watches my videos. Last month, I did this. Later that day, I got this text from Wyatt. I could usually shoot and edit a Casper spot in about three or four hours, but you know what? You can try out a Casper mattress risk-free for a hundred nights in your own home nor someone else's home if that's your thing. But my favorite part of a Casper commercial is telling you that you can take $50 off your first mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash WWMM and using the promo code WWMM at checkout. My goal every week is to have my woodworking project completed by Thursday morning. If I know a project is going to be more complicated, I may start earlier and sometimes even work up until Friday morning. This is why editing along the way helps out a lot. But I really prefer to block out most of the day on Thursday for editing. The very last things I shoot are the intro and outros and then the micro jig spot. I start with a rough edit. That's the one I put together while I'm building the project. It's often twice as long as the finished video. I spend a lot of time editing and removing unnecessary shots and scenes. If you're new to making videos, my advice is that you don't need to show everything in your workshop. Think in terms of storytelling rather than documentation. Then once I'm satisfied with the final edit, I render it at 1080p. At this point, I've probably watched the video 20 times or more and individual sections of it even more than that. If it's a special paid for theme video, I've probably seen it 50 times. So once my videos are on YouTube, I just never watch them again. I especially can't stand to watch any of my earliest videos. I try to publish all of my videos at 11 a.m. Pacific time every Friday. I start by finishing up any editing if needed, then I set up the project to take photos for the website article and the YouTube thumbnail. I make sure to format one just for Pinterest. I edit all of these in Photoshop. Finally, I upload two videos. First, I upload an unlisted version with no sponsored ads no AdSense or other monetization. These are strictly for my patrons over on Patreon who enjoy an ad-free experience. Next, I upload my main monetized version. As some of you who watch my show only on YouTube may not be aware that I accompany every project with a lengthy article with more details and instruction. This is actually a very painstaking process that can take me up to three hours to find screenshots from the video, write the article, and add the build plans. As soon as I'm done with the article, I post it to the website along with the video, and a lot of you have figured out this is a sneaky way to watch my videos before they go live on YouTube. Then when 11 o'clock comes, I switch the video from unlisted to public on YouTube. If I don't have any other commitments for my time, I try to spend some time answering YouTube comments. Those of you who watch right when the video goes public are some of the best fans of the show and I like to interact with you as much as I can. After that, I spend time promoting the video on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On Saturday morning, I'll be back at it, starting the whole process all over again. And that's the basics of how I get my projects and videos made each week. The biggest challenge is always organizing my time. Everything I described in this video is just a portion of what needs to be done to run my business. My team uses a lot of software to help us communicate and keep organized, but even then I'm always getting pulled away from my woodworking to deal with issues and problems and commitments. Thank you for supporting Woodworking for Mere Mortals all these years and helping to make it grow. It may seem very cliched to say, but I seriously couldn't do any of this without you watching the show. I started out in 2008 with a goal to simplify woodworking and to reach people who might have thought it was too expensive or required a lot of space or a lot of experience. I still keep that in mind every week when I choose my projects and how to present them. And of course, some of my projects are clunkers, but in every video I try to provide at least one tip or technique that you can pick up on and use for your own projects. Happy holidays, everybody. I'll be back in January re-energized with all new videos. Thanks for watching.